So I'm going to talk a bit about the new stuff that we are doing. Uh, and I'm going to focus on our query language. Uh, Who are you? Oh, yeah. So I'm the CTO. <laughs> Don't everyone know me? <laughs> uh, what? Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, my name is uh, Simon Svalas Kukstu, uh, and I've been um, I'm one of the designers of the kind of data backend uh, for Sanity. So the query language mutation system and, and, uh, and that I've designed with uh, Alexander Staubo and uh, Erik uh, Grinaker uh, here. As you know, uh, Grok, it's kind of data wrangling API of Sanity. It's how you get your data out of the document store. Our goal when we made it was to make a an API where you didn't have to actually define your API, where you're kind of implicitly defined by your data. So you can basically just put your data in and start querying it without actually setting anything up. So it's uh, designed to be a kind of general query language for, for JSON objects. So the way you, you, you can do it, you can kind of, uh, the asterisk there means everything, and then you can filter that, say, I, I want everything, but ev I want things that is of the type movie as release year more than 1979, and I will sort it by release year, and I want the fields, ID, title, and release year. So then you get these kind of records that you build yourself. So that was kind of, uh, our goal was to have like a, a little bit more power than a REST API, and a little bit more kind of uh, convenience than a, than a GraphQL API, which you always have to configure everything. Uh, so we were supposed to be kind of the, the kind of low level query language of, uh, of Sanity. And then when we released it, we were kind of, uh, kind of scared that we were kind of exposing people to a completely new query language. But people kind of uh, seem to kind of love it and, and take to it. And, and it's been a bit scary because what we thought of as kind of a simple uh, basic query language is being used like this. <laughs> because it's maybe, in, in one sense, it's maybe too powerful but with, because people start expecting to be able to do everything in one query, like never have to go back to the server again. Like everything, I have to define all my needs for this page in one query. And then when people can't do that, they were like, I can't do this kind of mapping this thing through that thing and joining it like seven ways. And that's, uh, in one sense, it's a bit uh, scary. And in the other sense, it's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, it's, uh, Grok is mu much more powerful than it was intended to be. Uh, and it's used very differently from what we uh, planned. So, so we kind of, because when we designed it, it was supposed to be a, a simpler thing. It's like improvised design. Me and Alex sitting in uh, his uh, flat in New York, just kind of trying things out. But now, of course, it's, it has to grow up. So. It turned out to be a fine machine. It has, as I'm sure some of you have experienced, some kind of surprising corner cases that can be a bit scary sometimes. Uh, and you have to work around. So the most important task now with, uh, with Grok is turning it over to uh, Erik Grinaker, which is a kind of an opposite kind of person from me. <laughs> he is uh, consistent and accurate, and he will not deal with any inconsistencies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he'll, he has written this huge test suite to expose all the kind of corner cases and every little weird little thing we have in Grok, and has started the work of uh, kind of deriving a formal spec for Grok as we move towards a more mature implementation. Because it's, as, as we have realized now, it's a much you know, like more powerful thing than we imagined, a much more important thing than we imagined. And it has to be much more like stable and formally uh, sound than we expected it to have to be. As while we are doing that, we can't stop, so we still have to deliver new features. We still have to improve the kind of overall surface of the API. But we have to kind of be able to do that and still not break things for you. <laughs> so, so what we are doing right now is we are building this machine where we uh, capture all your queries and snapshot your data. And then we, as we develop kind of new releases of, uh, of Grok, we will con con uh, continuously run your queries, both in the kind of shadow version and the current version, so that we can expose uh, like unexpected changes that we introduced without kind of knowing it. It's very hard to, when it's not properly defined, it's very hard to change it without actually making changes that you don't know about. So the, at least and in this way, of course, we have a huge test suite as well. 
But in this, in, in this manner, we'll also have kind of a statistical test based on what people are actually doing with it that we couldn't maybe even imagine. Uh, and then we'll try to not break anything uh, for you. And if we have to, you'll be contacted by our team of customer success agents. Uh, <laughs> and we'll negotiate with you and try to, 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 to make a change in your product. And, 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 if you, uh, and if you want, and if you're paying customers, we won't change it. Um, at some point in the future, we'll, of course, provide versions of Grok uh, so that you can be on a version, a version of Grok and just stay there and never change your code. But right now, our focus is, is on kind of having that first version be a very well-defined and consistent version because that makes it simpler to make it to keep it stable as we introduce new, ver new versions of, of Grok. Nevertheless, uh, the topic today is to talk about the new things we did anyway, even though we shouldn't right now, actually. Uh, but there is a pressure to, to do new things. So, so this is just, uh, how many of you have actually used Grok in any meaningful way? Okay, nice. So I have an audience. I was kind of scared that <laughs> I just talked to myself here. So uh, one of the things we are introducing soon is, uh, is just common arithmetic operators. So that you can compose, can combine a first name or a last name or compute something simple as part of your query. Uh, one thing that we, we didn't make, because we, we have these projections, that you kind of describe your object. You can say, like, these are the fields I want. Uh, and because it's so often JSON, it's often objects, we kind of didn't design a system to actually have arrays come out of that. It's just kind of a thing we forgot. Uh, and as, I w as I was tinkering today with this presentation, I was kind of playing with how that should work. Uh, how you should express that. So I thought it would be nice if you can take your thing and you can like, make a little parenthesis and you can write your array and it would project like that. And then I tried it and it actually works. So that feature actually is ready today. <laughs> we just didn't know it. It's been there from the beginning. <laughs> but it's a very useful feature because sometimes when you fetch a lot of data, maybe for processing and stuff, you spend a lot of bandwidth just, just for the kind of uh, field names. Uh, so sometimes I just make these short field names just to compress the data because I actually parsing JSON is often a lot of the time in, uh, in your processing. So this is just a very nice way to just get rid of them all together. So it has a very nice use case. One thing that we also lacked was the ability to merge uh, objects and concatenate arrays. So that's basically like if you have an object like this outer object here and you want another object to kind of be smashed into the other one so they are on the same level you can use the dot 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 operator. So you can kind of uh, merge them. So this can be useful, for example, if you have this, this is from the movie data set, the sample data set that comes with Sanity. So if you have cast members and you want to have the name and the image of the person kind of smashed into the cast member object together with the character name, you can do it very simply like this. And then you get a very clean, it's a very clean and fast way to express this uh, combined object. So what you get out is on the same level here. Uh, same thing with arrays, like uh, combining arrays like this, dot, 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 an array will kind of explode it into the surrounding array. So this is a way to compose arrays together. So one way to use that is, like in the data set, you have two arrays of people. You have cast members and you have crew members. If you wanted to combine them into one array, you can now do that by dot, dot, dotting them, smashing them into the same array. And then uh, here I'm taking the person name from each of those. So you get this very clean, nice array, just the names of all those people, regardless of their, of their source. And then we have the, another just omission. We didn't have a way to refer to this object. We always have to refer to, um, to, uh, to some attribute. So let's say you have this uh, expression here. So these are two objects, Edward and Rutger. So let's say you want to search this uh, collection of objects. You can pipe that to the, to the filter that matches this with the root, and you'll get out the root gear. But then what if you have uh, this one? So just an array of strings. There's actually no way to, to do the same thing because you can't refer to the string itself. So this is this new groundbreaking feature in uh, Grok, where you can actually refer to the uh, item itself. So now you can search uh, a normal array of uh, strings or do anything with with kind of plain, plain, plain values like that. So for example here, if we go back to our uh, combined array of people from the last example, 
we can now order them by just uh, this and then sort them alphabetically like this. This is, uh, I'll just skip this, this is just too. <laughs> this is uh, one of the most uh, requested features we have. So the conditional evaluation. So usually if you, if you are dealing with block texts, or like this, the Sanity Studio is really, really nice at combining objects of different types. When you are building, let's say, a page builder where you have different components in an array, or, uh, or you're using, using the block text system where you have, can have embedded objects of different, kind, different types. It's very hard in Grok to actually do different things based on which type an object has. So uh, another thing is if you're doing a query like this, you're searching, uh, let's say it's a, just, a, just a search in a web page, and you're searching several types of documents. So here you're getting back a movie and a screening. And luckily, both of those have a title. But the rest of those objects are very different. So in the past, people would kind of just write all the possible projections that they could need for every possible object that could be returned in the same object. But now we have this new construct where you can say, you can, you can have a condition, then an arrow, and then a projection that you want when this condition is true. So for example, typical use of that would be to say, I'm searching for a blade something, and then if it's a movie, I want the actors. And if it's a screening, I want the beginning and end times of that screening. So I can kind of make different projections based on the, on the type of the object. So then I'll get completely different uh, objects out uh, and have full control. So it's very useful, especially with block text, so we, where you often need to make special joins and everything for each kind of object. It's really embarrassing sometimes when people ask how to do certain things with regards to that, because you couldn't. Now you can. Um, you don't have to do it on type, it can be other things. For example here, if we have the crew members of a movie, and then uh, here's a conditional, if the job is director, we'll go and get all the other movies by that same director. So then uh, suddenly your uh, list of crew members will have movies for the directors. The same thing is, is also available as a function. So you can say, uh, it will return the first conditional that's true. So here we, we ask for movies and we say re reduce the popular, popularity score to kind of a rating. So if it's more popular, popular than 19, it's popular. And if it isn't, it's unpopular. And then uh, we'll get this out. We'll get like a popularity rating for each element. So you can kind of uh, have all these kinds of, this. it's like an if else uh, sentence for Grok. Uh, another obvious omission that we had, we, in the, when, you, when you supply uh, terms to your search, so people would usually do something like this. You have like a title match terms, and then you provide your terms as a parameter from the outside to in, be interpolated into that. But in the past, you couldn't uh, uh, pass arrays as uh, params, but now you can. So now you can actually like, uh, supply all your terms uh, with one parameter. This is also avail available for objects. We don't know what that would be for yet, just for completeness. So that's my, uh, my talk. So that's it. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> Please, one, one question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>